Many people in Los Angeles who have lost their jobs worry about having enough to pay their rent. Chelsea Pelton Brown reports how the economy is taking a toll on the apartment rental market. Madeline Frizius is one of the many people across the United States who has been affected by the economy. She says it has been very hard to find a place to live because rent is very expensive and she was just laid off from her job. It's, the economy has affected it so much. I mean, minimum wage is only $8. So how are you going to pay $8 at a part-time job and still be able to pay rent? You know, it's, it's really hard. It's hard to find a new place. My lease is up at the end of the month and... I don't know where I'm going to go, and I don't know what I'm going to do. It's, a, it's really scary right now. The housing market has taken a major downshift in the past few years. The foreclosure rate in 2009 is up 30% compared to 2008. But homeowners are not the only people affected by the economy. For rent signs, move-in specials, and vacancy signs can be seen on nearly every block as managers look to find people to fill vacant units in apartment buildings. People even post up personal ads looking for roommates in their own homes. Assistant manager at North Point Apartments, Tani Sanjian, says they have had to lower their rent dramatically. It was like 1850 and the security deposit was also the same as uh, rent, but we reduced it to 1395 and security deposit is 250 so it's basically way cheaper now. She also said that in the summer months, there were more vacancies in the complex than ever before. Ads on Craigslist are placed daily as property managers try to rent out spaces in their buildings. Apartment complexes have even thought of clever ways to lure in prospective renters by making fancy brochures filled with photos of their properties. But the application process may be the hardest part as many people are turned down based on their income and credit history. For rent signs continue to pop up across the United States. In California, this is largely due to the unemployment rate, which has risen to 12.2%. This is forcing people into foreclosure or causing them to sell their homes. In North Hills, I'm Chelsea Pelton Brown for Valley View News. Coming up next, Obama makes his first presidential trip to China, and in sports, a look at a history making moment in boxing. General Motors is optimistic about its future, even though it's lost more than a billion dollars in the third quarter. It's so optimistic it could start repaying its government loans. If so, that would be more than five years before the loans are due. The American automaker emerged from bankruptcy in July. GM chief executive Fritz Henderson says the loss was actually better than he expected and that the company shows some signs of progress. Much lower than, uh, than what it has been, uh, although it's not necessarily comparable, and certainly better than uh, our plan going into bankruptcy. But nonetheless, it's a loss and you cannot be satisfied with it. GM could make its first billion dollar repayment to the government in December. The Food and Drug Administration is considering a ban on drinks that blend caffeine and alcohol. The drinks are popular among young people. Top FDA officials say they increase the risk of drunk driving, sexual assault, dangerous behavior and accidents. The FDA is asking manufacturers to prove the drinks are safe or else they will be taken off the market. Top law enforcement officials from 19 states have already stopped some corporations. Anheuser-Busch and Miller Coors stopped selling Tilt, Bud Extra and Sparks. Federal health care overhaul bills could make it hard for states to enforce their own insurance laws. That's because the measures allow insurance companies to sell policies across state lines. Critics says such a plan would encourage insurance firms to sell policies in states where laws are the weakest. Opponents say the bills would also require insurance buyers to make higher payments and obtain unnecessary plans and treatments. Proponents say the plans would free insurance companies from burdensome state rules and better serve customers. President Obama at a town hall meeting in China says freedom of information in the U.S. is a key part of a strong democracy. Obama promoted freedom of speech to a Chinese population often deprived of it. In the United States, information is free. And I have a lot of critics in the United States who can say all kinds of things about me. I actually think that that makes our democracy stronger and it makes me a better leader because it forces me to hear opinions that I don't want to hear. Obama's subtle push for rights has been the only challenge to the Chinese government during a tour through Asia. Shanghai students attended the town hall meeting that was streamed live and uncensored through Chinese state-run media. South Korea is a top bidder for the first nuclear power plants in the Arab world, and that surprised many observers. The United Arab Emirates wants to build at least four nuclear power re reactors at a cost of more than $40 billion. 
Industry leader Areva SA of France is also a major competitor for the bid. A winner could be chosen in the next few weeks. The winner will build the first power plant in the biggest and richest United Arab Emirate, Abu Dhabi. If South Korea wins the project, it will be the first time the country has built a nuclear plant overseas. South Korea is trying to keep up with nuclear industry leaders by going international. Now on to Joseph Prado, who will tell us what's happening in sports. He's got the dish with Manny Pacquiao's win, the Los Angeles Lakers' loss, and more. Joe? Thanks, Samantha. Hey there, sports fans. We begin in the world of boxing. Manny Pacquiao and Miguel Cotto squared off in one of the most highly anticipated fights of the year. They met at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas for the WBO welterweight title, and Pacquiao would come out swinging. The Filipino fighter was too fast for the Puerto Rican champ, and the Pac-Man scored knockdowns in the third and fourth rounds. His trainer, Freddie Roach, predicted a win in the ninth or tenth, but it came here in round 12. Referee Kenny Bayless stopped the fight and gave Pacquiao the TKO win. The victory means Pacquiao has won a title in seven different weight divisions. No one's ever done that before. A boxing dream matchup is now set between Ring Magazine's number one and two pound-for-pound pound pound fighters in the world, Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather Jr. Coming off a loss to the Denver Nuggets, the Lakers were back in town and they were looking for some home cooking against the Houston Rockets and Trevor Ariza. Here's Ariza getting his championship ring from Kobe before the game. Rocket guard Aaron Brooks has been a nuisance for the Lakers. He gets his three to fall. That's one of five for the game. Tied in the third, Ariza picks Kobe's pocket and gets the steal and the dunk to put his team up by two. Brooks again gets a pass from Luis Scola and hits another three. The Oregon guard finished with 33 points. Kobe had to leave early with a groin injury. No Laker highlights this time. It was that type of game for the Lake Show. They lost 101 to 91. The New Orleans Saints brought their undefeated record to St. Louis in what turned out to be a pretty close game. Midway through the third quarter, Saints up four when Reggie Bush explodes out of the backfield for a 55-yard run. He even throws in a little stiff arm before getting brought down. That right there was the longest run of his career. He's pumped up. On the same drive, Marcus Colson catches the easy pass but then fumbles at the goal line trying to dive in. The 1-8 Rams make a valiant effort but fall short against the Saints, 28-23. The Saints are sitting pretty at 9-0. Next up for them, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Chargers running back LaDainian Tomlinson was looking to have a big game versus the Philadelphia Eagles. He had some good news from his wife. The two are expecting their first child. To celebrate, Tomlinson went off on the Eagles. Chargers up early. LT takes the handoff and he goes in for the TD. The touchdown puts Tomlinson third overall for career touchdowns. The Eagles and Donovan McNabb battled back. McNabb finds Brent Selleck for the score. And finally, the last chance for the Eagles. McNabb looks downfield and finds Chargers corner Antonio Cromartie for the INT. The Chargers win four in a row. Tomlinson ran for a season-high 96 yards and moves to number 12 on the all-time career rushing list in the NFL. And finally, two of the NFL's elite faced off in one of the matchups of the year. Tom Brady and the Patriots were hoping to put a dent in the Indianapolis Colts' perfect record. Late in the fourth with no timeouts left, the Patriots would go for it on their own 29-yard line. Kevin Falk makes the catch, but he is short. The Patriots needed only two yards, but the aggressive call by Bill Belichick did not pay off. Colts would have great field position, and Payne Manning would cap it off to a quick strike to Reggie Wayne for the touchdown. The Colts edge the Patriots 35-34. to Indianapolis remains undefeated for the year. They will be tested next game with a stingy Baltimore Raven defense.